Today is January 26, 2013, the third Sunday after Epiphany. So I'm going to preach the today's gospel that is from the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 4 through 21. So I'm going to read the gospel first and then I'm going to preach about it. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee and report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Brother and sister in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we all know today or this week, is the third Sunday Epiphany, so we are in the Epiphany moment. 
So my focus will be on the epiphany moment. The Greek word epiphany means to reveal, means to make known. We still use the word epiphany in English when something suddenly becomes clear to us we call that an epiphany moment. During this season of epiphany we focus on such epiphany moments in the early, earthly life of our Lord. Events which made clear, revealed, made known who he is and the mission he became into the, our world to accomplish. Jesus came to this world to accomplish, to save us, to redeem us from the sin. We began on the festival of Epiphany with the visit of the wise men to the infant Jesus, with their worship and the precious, precious gifts, this Epiphany moment that we have done since the, uh, Christmas moment until now reveals him to the be not just any child but the kings of king and the lord of lord god coming to our world in human flesh in you and me at the gospel of john says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and it continues that verse and the word become flesh and dwelled among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth brother and sister in Christ on the first Sunday after Epiphany we commemorated the baptism of our Lord this Epiphany moment reveals him to be one of the three persons of the Trinity God. Heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And again, last Sunday, on the second Sunday of after the Epiphany, that is the epiphany moment for us as a Lutheran calendar that we follow. We call Jesus first miracle turning water into wine at Canaan. And today this epiphany moment made clear to the disciple that Jesus must be much more than just a great rabbi. As John concludes, he thus revealed his glory and his disciples Put their faith in him, says the word of God. And today in this moment, on the third epiphany, the third Sunday after epiphany, we look at another epiphany moment in today's gospel reading, which I read before, from the fourth of chapter Luke, beginning verse 44 to 21. But some words that caught me there. It says, He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. He, I have been last summer in, a, in Israel and I have seen this city, Nazareth. The modern city of Nazareth has a population of over 50,000 people there. But in ancient times, Nazareth was just a little village. A lot, a, a, a lot of like uh, Minnesota, uh, you know, or South Dakota or North Dakota, and like rural communities, a small, close-knit community with most the people involved in agriculture like South and North Dakota. Luke says, now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. When he was a child, Jesus' family moved back from Bethlehem to Nazareth, where he was born 
to Joseph and Mary's hometowns, Nazareth. Born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth. Jesus grew up and lived quietly for some 30 years in this small town, working as a carpenter with his adopted father, Joseph. When he was about 30 years, Jesus left Nazareth to begin his three years public ministry, beginning with his baptism by his cousin John the Baptist. After his baptism, he performed the miracle of turning water into wine at nearby Cana and traveled around teaching in the other towns of Galilee. As today's gospel reading begins that I did, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and everyone pressed him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. Remember, as was his custom. For 30 years he knows his custom. That's why he did it the way he just grew up. No doubt the people back in Nazareth have heard all about the wonderful things being done by their hometown hero, which is Jesus Christ. The synagogue was probably packed that Sunday, Sabbath Sunday. They just came to see Jesus, the home hero. Because Jesus was coming home. They knew him for 30 years. It is unique when he came home. On Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as it was his custom. And he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handled, handled to him. They just gave it to him to read. He covered his head. He just go forward, he opens the scroll, and he start reading. Then he rolled up the scroll, give it back after he read, give it back to the attendant, and sat down when he finished. This is the oldest known description of synagogue worship at that time. Jesus had worshipped in this synagogue for some 30 years. Now returning as a rabbi, he follows to traditional liturgical custom he learned as a child, standing to read the lesson from Isaiah and then sitting to preach a sermon on it, probably cross-legged on a platform in the front in the traditional style of an uh, oriental teacher. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. They just focused on him. They were expecting what he's going to say now. Everybody was so amazed to hear from him when he gave back to his hometown. And then their eyes was fastened on him. And he began saying to them, Today the scripture, today this scripture, which is uh, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, says Jesus. Brother and sister in Christ, in this epiphany moment, Jesus declares to the startled crowd that he is much more than just the boy next door and carpenter they grow up with much more than just the son of Mary and adopted son of Joseph, much more than just a local boy done good, much more than just a great teacher and rabbi. In his sermon, announced that he himself in the long-awaited promised Messiah whom Isaiah prophesied. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. But there were many misconceptions about what the Messiah would do when he came. 
Many people, including Jesus' own disciples, thought that the Messiah would be a great political figure, a revolutionary, who would liberate the Hebrew nation from the Roman oppressors. That's the way they thought. And so, in this epiphany moment, Jesus also makes known the real mission of liberation which he came into our world to accomplish. That was his mission, not a polit political figure or re revolutionary. He found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, said. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Press God. That was he said. Jesus is saying, you are the poor, the spiritually poor, poor, miserable sinners. You are prisoners, imprisoned by sin. They stand for the punishment of death in, in, a, in a bad nation. You are the blind, spiritual blind. You know, know the way of salvation. You walk blindly in the ways of evil. You are the oppressed, oppressed by Satan and your own sin and wickedness. You have only one hope, say, the, Messi the Messiah Isaiah prophesies. He will preach good news. He will proclaim freedom. He will show the blind the way. He will release the oppressed. He will proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He will be your savior. Your wait is over. The Savior is here. I am He. Scripture is fulfilled, said Jesus in His preaching. Then He told them, I preach you good news. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, says the Bible. I proclaim to you freedom. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. That's the way says the Bible. I show you the way of salvation. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, said Jesus. I release you from oppression. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also in me. Come to me, all you who are worried and heavy laden, and I will give you the rest, said Jesus. He is calling you. He is comforting you. He is telling you the truth. The only truth, which is the Bible. All this blessing which Jesus brings are summed up in the phrase. The year of the Lord's favor. I like that word. The year of the Lord's favor. When someone have, has a 50 year anniversary and we call it a golden jubilee, right? Uh, so that word jubilee actually comes from the Hebrew Old Testament. God commanded his people every 50 years to have a special year of celebration, which in Hebrew is jubilee. During this jubilee year, all debts were canceled, all slaves freed, 
all prisoners released from prison. Brother and sister in Christ. That was symbolic of what was to come. The Jubilee year of the Lord of the Old Testament pointed toward to what the Messiah would accomplish. That's why he says the year of the Lord's favor. For the year of the Lord's favor which Jesus ushers is not just a year, but an era, the messianic age. The year of the Lord's favor is the entire time since the coming of Christ, the era will come. The A.D. Anno Domini. Anno Domini. The year of our Lord. Every time you write, when you write, the day 2013, remember, remember that we are right now spiritually in an unending year of jubilee. Your debts, God, your debts to God are cancelled. You are free from sin. You are free from your sin. You are released from your punishment. Yet the year of the Lord is favor. The year of the Lord's favor is now not only yesterday is even now today as paul says in the second corinthians now is the time of god's favor now is the day of salvation said so brother and sister in christ in this epiphany moment at his hometown synagogue at nazareth jesus reveals himself to be the Messiah and makes known the mission he came into the, our world to accomplish. Today, here in your hometown church, Christ still preached to you the same good news. You are forgiven. You are free. You are released. Now is the time of God's favor toward you. So, in the scriptures, long ago, the Lord promised to send the Messiah. His promise is come true. Jesus is your Savior. Because the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He is the only way, except through Jesus, there is no way to go to Father. The scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yes.
Sing a lot.